Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is Environmental Science Video 9. It's on ecosystem diversity. A model we've talked a lot about so far is this idea that the Earth provides life support for the society of humans, which is driven by economy. Now, economics is the choices that we're making, but economy, if we put a monetary value on it, it's going to be a really large number. It's $75 trillion. That's the world gross product. That's what we make, products, and also what we do, the services. It's a huge number, but it's actually small compared to what's called ecosystem ecosystem services. That's what the planet does, what the planet makes and what the planet does for us, and it does that for free. In other words, it makes oxygen, it makes soil, it recycles nutrients, filters water, and so it's doing that for free, and it's more efficient the more diverse the ecosystems on our planet are. The more diversity we have, the better it is for ecosystem services. And as we degrade ecosystems, we're going to have to take on some of that cost. Biodiversity is a measure of the variety of life on our planet. One way to measure that is the variety of species on our planet. How do we increase the number of species? We do that through speciation. The mechanism by which that occurs is evolution by natural selection. Now, how do we decrease the number of species? That's through extinction. That's one way to measure biodiversity. What's another way to measure it? We could measure genetic diversity, or we could measure ecosystem diversity, all of the different ecosystems that we have on our planet. And that lends itself to this idea of ecosystem services, what the world can do for us. And it really does things in four different areas that we'll talk about in this video, supporting us, provisioning us, regulating the planet. And there's also cultural significance as well. So we can measure biodiversity on our planet in one of three ways. We could measure the different types of ecosystems that we have, the different species that we have, or the different genes that we have within those individuals. But if we take species as an example, because that drives everything else, how did we get the variety of species on our planet? That's through evolution. So Darwin pointed out that all life on our planet shares one common ancestor a branching tree of life. Now that's not super accurate. Let me show you a scientific one. This is a cladogram that's showing how dolphins, whales, hippos, dogs are all related. And so they're looking at genetic similarities. But what you find is this cladogram that's branching out just like this tree of life. And so there are gonna be areas where it branches. And so one becomes two. We call that speciation, one species becoming two species. And that's how we increase the number of species on the planet. Now, how do we decrease the number of species? You can see that on this cladogram as well. Some of these are fossils, and that's because they're extinct. In other words, they're grayed out on this cladogram. That's when one species becomes zero species. It takes a lot longer for speciation to occur than extinction. So what's the major mechanism of speciation? It's evolution through natural selection. If you're not sure how that works, Imagine we've got some bacteria, and here's different types of bacteria. They have varying levels of resistance to an antibiotic. And so let's say you take an antibiotic. Which of these are going to be killed? Well, the ones that are least resistant. So once we take the antibiotic, this is after selection or after that selective process, and so now here's our final population. It's evolving over time. And that's how humans have become better adapted to their environment. But if we look at speciation, how does that occur? Well, imagine we have a group of fish that are in a pond, and they're interbreeding with each other. We'll call them one species, and they somehow get separated. Maybe it dries up, and now we have two ponds. And so what happens over thousands and thousands of years is that they're each going to adapt to their environment and so they're going to be perfectly adapted to that so maybe there's changes in size changes in coloration changes in behavior and so they are now becoming two species how do we know that let's say that we put them back together again let's say the pond grows again if they quit interbreeding with each other now we know that two species have evolved now this takes a long time for this to occur but let's say the climate changes let's say the environment changes and all of that species goes away, that's called extinction. It's going from that one species to zero species. And this occurs, we can look back in the geologic time, it occurs all the time. And so we have had five mass extinctions over time. So we're looking back here as millions of years in the past, and this is extinction rates. And so there are lots of different causes. The one you're probably familiar with is the asteroid impact that caused this extinction of the dinosaurs. Now, most scientists would argue that we're on the verge of what's called the sixth mass extinction. In other words, words, we're seeing extinction of species at a rate that we've never seen in the past. Now, who's causing that? That's humans that are causing it. And that's a big deal because the earth provides these ecosystem services, services that we need. If we were to say, what are those? 
they're in these four areas and let's go through each of those first of all they support us they support us through number one production in other words plants and the process of photos photosynthesis makes food and it also makes oxygen that we breathe it also is making the soil that we use to grow our crops and it's also recycling nutrient these are all ecosystem services things that the that the earth does for free that we utilize we could also look at uh, provisioning services so they're making the provision the food that we eat so seafood comes from the sea water we're getting lumber we could look at minerals or even energy from the Sun so that's all provided from the planet itself at no cost to us we could also look at regulation so filtration of water occurs naturally we don't have to filter the water the ecosystem is doing that now if it, the ecosystem is gone and we have to make water filtration it's going to cost us a lot more decomposition we could talk about carbon sequestration or climate regulation these are all services that the ecosystem provides and it also provides cultural significance be it historical spiritual maybe educational or recreational think about if we put a monetary value on ecotourism that comes from that area it's it's hugely valuable and so it's important that we protect the diversity from a monetary perspective not just because it's the right thing to do but it makes sense monetarily and so did you learn the following could you pause the video and fill in all the blanks if not, let me do it for you. And so biodiversity is a variety of life. We could measure that in the variety of species, also genes and ecosystems. So how do we increase the number of species? Speciation, evolution through natural selection. How do we decrease it? Through extinctions. Ecosystems provide ecosystem services that could be supporting us, provisioning us, regulating, and cultural services. So I hope you got that, and I hope that was helpful.